Welcome back, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where even if you win, you can't get back your soul. I am your host, Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my Man of Steel co-host. Hi, I'm Paul. Uh, and we have a guest with us today. I guess I normally say, I, or you can call me Mackle, I didn't do that this time. So we have a guest with us today. <laughs> yeah. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Chris, and this is a curse. <laughs> Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. I made it, but it's your curse. I know, that's that's most of my curses. <laughs> you, you did this to us. See, I thought I was going to get off scot-free, alright? Like, you thought that just worst, me and Matt were going to have to talk about it? And no, I thought you guys would have broke Olivia on it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to bring Olivia into this, how nice. Mm -hmm. Olivia already had to, do up two, had to do two episodes, so admit, see, now it's your turn. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh... Movies from 1990, comic book movies from 1997, both of which star African American leads. Very specific matchup. <laughs> uh, it's Steel versus Spawn. They also have very similar titles, like one syllable S words. Yeah. They also have very similar plots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, both involve like a military super weapon, I suppose. Yeah. Both have like. One bad guy that betrayed them. Like they're not perfectly the same, but they're, they're weirdly enough close. No, I, I hear yeah. you. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, no, there there is like a weird amount of overlap between these two films that, honestly, on the surface, on the surface, feel fairly different. I had to think about it, but yeah, you're right. Like there's, a, I, I feel like there's a very different tone to both of these movies, and, you know, you've got, like, a supernatural angle versus, like, a more grounded scientific... I say grounded, it's the way goofier one, but... <laughs> <laughs> would these have been playing at the same time? Could you have caught a double feature of this? Oh, let's see. That would have been crazy. the release date. Uh, the release date was August 1st for Spawn, and for Steel, it was... August 15th, yes! Oh my goodness! Someone probably did right, do a Spawn yeah. and Steel double feature. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. We're we're throwing right back to 97, the summer of 97. Do you think this was the worst day of someone's life? Uh, no. I think it was the best day of someone's life. <laughs> Not because of the movies, he just, like, lost his virginity that day. <laughs> Presumably by someone who didn't go and see those two movies with him. Yeah, correct. Uh, so, uh, let's talk about the movie Steel, starring Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal is Steel, Dr. Seuss-ass movie. Um, <laughs> Got a green egg and ham it. <laughs> oh, God. Weirdly enough, Chris and I will, like, go for the exact same joke at the exact same time so often. <laughs> and we both went for a green egg and ham it joke in this movie at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so, Steel is about Shaquille O'Neal as an army man. And, uh, they're testing this new super weapon tank that can, like, destroy buildings. But then, uh, a guy uses it irresponsibly and, like, kills a senator and injures, uh, the, the woman he's banging. So then, he just, he, he testifies against the guy in court. He feels really betrayed by the whole situation, leaves the army, goes back home to L.A., but something weird's going on. Suddenly people have this technology out on the streets of L.A. And he's like, we, we gotta stop it. This is our technology. So he, he builds himself a giant metal super suit so he can go around and, and fight crime in L.A. That has, has now gone high-tech military weaponry. Oh, and, and you don't want to wear purple. Remember that, guys. Purple is the color you shouldn't wear in L.A. Um, what'd you guys think? Um, I thought it was mildly entertaining at parts. Um, I definitely got a good kick out of some of the performances because everybody, nobody really acts like a normal person in this. <laughs> uh, and I liked that. I enjoyed that. I, I, but I don't think it like carries the so bad it's good momentum throughout. I think it drags throughout a lot of it. But it's it, it kind of got close to being one of those so bad it's good movies, you know. I, there was like a lot of parts where I was having a good time with it. In terms of production, 
It wasn't like terrible, but it, I, Mitzi compared it to a sitcom while we were watching it, and I kind yeah. of agree. It feels very sitcomish throughout a lot of it. None of the action scenes were really that impressive. It was just, but none of it was like, like a CG computer program well, from 1990 either. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, I think they were referring specifically to like. His grandmother's house yeah. just looks like a set from a sitcom. Right. Yeah. Well, even the way they were talking, like the whole whispering to the souffle kind of thing. Well, like the way the movie was lit, the all of the sets in the movie, like the entire thing, just it didn't really feel like that cinematic to me. If, despite being a comic book movie, you know, it's like supposed to be really cinematic, and I, I kind of felt like they just filmed this in some town. They filmed some of the scenes at the dump. They they didn't really go that big with it. It doesn't feel... This is a weird movie that yeah. just... It's it's one of those ones that, like, if you know anything about comic books, it's like, why did you even bother? This could have just been a original <laughs> movie for Shaq because... So, here's the deal, because if I didn't do it, Olivia would kill me. Steel came from the idea of the death of Superman. So, obviously, this movie wasn't going to be that. I, hell, I don't even know if we know if Superman's in this universe. Because they, they... There's multiple times where they even yeah, reference Superman. But it's like, is he a comic character or is he real? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like a weird Venom situation. Except even Venom, like, deliberately chooses not to reference Spider-Man at all. And see, that's kind of the thing is that I'm surprised Sony didn't look at this and go, yeah, maybe we shouldn't not have our main hero here. Because it's kind of the same thing as the Sony-verse. <laughs> yeah, this is a character that is like so reliant on another superhero existing. Yeah. I only know who Steel is because he was one of the Supermans that they had at Six Flags on the Superman Tower of Power. In, like, the queue, there's a bunch of different Supermans. It's like, oh, here's, here's like, Bizarro, and here's, you know, this this version of Superman, and here's Steel. Yeah, it's it's just so weird that, like, they decided to make this a Steel movie. I think if you just told Shaq, hey, you're going to be a superhero, it's original, it probably would have been better. I think they did that with other actors, too, so, I mean, hey... <laughs> I, yeah. it, it almost feels like they want it to be that. Like, they're, they're all, like, going out of their way to not acknowledge the comic. Yeah, like Supergirl, kind of. <laughs> it feels like um, the only real acknowledgement to other superheroes exist in is, like, one of the characters that, it might even be St Shaq, uh, has a Superman tattoo, and it's like, but that could just be an in-universe, like, oh, they watch the Superman show or movies or com read the comics in their world. That doesn't mean that Superman exists in that world. So, like, it doesn't really... Yeah, the world isn't really explained, I guess. And I feel like, it, like I said, you didn't have to make this a Steel movie. Like, it didn't have to be that. And I think yeah. that that might be where the disappointment comes in, you know, for comic book people. <laughs> could, it could have been Shaq Man. Shaq Man. <laughs> I thought that the movie had a relatively entertaining cast, as I already said before. I did think that there was one pretty big, weak link uh, in that, and I don't know if we want to save Caston to talk about that, but I feel like there was one character that brought the movie to a screaming halt in terms of entertainment value. As a whole, I, 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 you know, I got some laughs out of it. It's not like... You know, we've watched worse comic book movies on the show. It's This is one of those bad movies that's, like, really funny right at the start, really funny right at the end, but pretty boring in the middle. Yeah. Because it's all stuff you've seen before. Like, it's it's a really uncreative movie, so it drags in the middle just because you're used to seeing this. But they, they put their really wild ideas right at the beginning and right at the end. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I'd put this movie in terms of all the movies we've watched for the show now, because we're getting close to the 70s at this point. Uh, yeah, it's like right in the middle of all of that. Like, it's not, it's nowhere near the worst thing we've watched. It's nowhere near the best thing we watched. It's just kind of, it's as average as you get, I, th I feel. Yeah, it has, it has laughs. It definitely has laughs, but like, it also has some really long, boring scenes that don't need, that... Don't interest me. I can't say they don't need to be in there because, like, if you start cutting all the boring scenes, there's no movie left, but... <laughs> right. I mean, isn't that better at this point? <laughs> it's it's just Shaq comes to L.A., builds a suit, fights the bad guy, the end. 
Yeah. When the movie's being crazy, it's a lot of fun. When the movie's, like, almost trying to be more serious and, be, like, yeah, I, I almost appreciate that it's trying to have a story and do stuff with its characters. Like, one of the big scenes that we kind of poked fun of while we are watching is the one girl falls out of a wheelchair and they don't help her because they want, they want her to realize that she can get back up herself. But, like, it's such a boring scene that really all we got out of it is we just started making, like, why didn't they help her at all? What I, I really get that scene, but I also feel like as a person that knows a person in a wheelchair, sometimes they're not at that point to do it. So that person could have just been struggling. <laughs> you right? can also like, like see what their limit is. Like if they go up to them and try to help them and they say no, listen to them when they say no. You don't have to force see, it. What, but... I'm, what I'm trying to get at is we don't know how much physical therapy she went through because like they never talked about it. Shaq just picked her up and took her so like yeah forcefully took her out of the hospital <laughs> yeah. in a wheelchair as everybody clapped <laughs> that she was being kidnapped if only that, that chair had wheels on it so he wouldn't have to carry it <laughs> come on matt that's crazy grow up oh it's also kind of funny because this is something that you mentioned how fucking a bit you know how much of a giant shack is and how yeah. his secret identity is supposed to be something in this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like gee i wonder if it's the seven foot six guy the one seven foot six guy in the area see but that's why it'd be great if Shaq was like the main villain of a horror movie oh uh, like scary movie three just imagine a creeper like i'm coming for you <laughs> it also like even before he bu builds the steel suit he's like unreasonably strong <laughs> Like, not super, like, Superman strong, but, like, I don't know, he rips a gate off a fence. Yeah. He breaks a right? phone. He, yeah, he's, he's clearly, like, a strong dude, even without the suit. So it's sort of like, how much do you need the suit? Also, also, uh, can we talk about the scene where he, like, needs to get out of a situation and he uses, like, like a little rope, like a... Batman thing where he attaches like a to the roof hook. and slides away. Yeah, instead of flying like the, thing the that character still does. does. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love what I love is how he has a hammer that he doesn't actually use as a hammer. He uses it as a gun. Speaking of which, actually, before we move on from the suit, you brought up that the helmet they tried to make it like this big thing, but you brought up how it looks like Bible Man's helmet <laughs> or like mask. Did look like I, that, that is though. kind of like a common shape for like superhero masks to be. It does kind of also remind me of like the Ben Affleck uh, Daredevil mask. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, that one at least has like a little bit of horns to it. But like, it's still funny that like yeah. this could have been a Bible Man origin story if you like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you could tweak the poster very easily and make it look like Shaquille O'Neal is playing Bible Man. I would watch that. <laughs> Would you like to talk about the people who appear in this film? Yes. And can I uh, start this one? Sure. So start with Shaquille O'Neal. Just want to say, second timer now. <laughs> he was also in Hubie Halloween. Um, oh, so he's in the he run-in. And he has a track record of mainly bad movies to where he could absolutely become the king depending on what we do and don't cover on the show because he was in... You know, Grown Ups 2, Smurfs 2, Jack and Jill, Freddy Got Fingered, um, Kazam, that's a big one. There's a movie called Show Dogs, which is a weird, uh, is that supposed to be like Showgirls? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I remember that one getting, that there was like some weird controversy with that one. Yes, you know, I don't think we'd do Scary Movie 4, but I know that's, that's one of the ones that people don't like, right? Or is that Scary Movie 5? Uh, yeah, 5... Three and four were actually two of the better ones. Five okay. is where it starts to go back downhill. Yeah, and so the only place where Shaquille O'Neal might be safe is he really hasn't done that many movies in the grand scheme of things. I, I kind of, I've been thinking about doing like a drunk ranking of every movie where Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> is playing a character. I'm not counting the ones where he just plays himself, but all of the ones where he plays a character. Although apparently he was... Apparently he was in the Smurfs too, which what? I watched the same night we watched Steel. So <laughs> he was a smooth Smurf. 
he was he he has like one line. <laughs> <laughs> I think Annabeth in this movie he's fun. He he gives a fun performance. It's not good, but I feel like you kind of get the I feel like you get a consistent tone with him in the rest of the movie. Yeah, I mean it it feels like I don't know, it, it feels authentic. It feels like he's just playing like a big dumb guy who's like trying to help people. Yeah. There are some scenes where it feels like he's acting like a brick wall, though. Or, like, th- because, like, they you can see the other actors actually trying, and then he's kind of just, yeah, I understand, you, you're in a wheelchair, yeah. I think, um, Annabeth Gish is the weak link of this movie. I don't know if I'm saying her last name right, because I think her character was really boring, and I think she kind of brings the movie down with her. Sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Uh. Like, she's not the worst or anything. Like, it's not like, oh, this is the worst character I've ever covered in a movie. But I feel like you have these characters who are kind of over the top. And then she's just kind of playing it straight. But it's, uh, I don't think she's interesting enough to where I care about the normal parts of the movie. Where she, it's just like, oh, this is a person with actual trauma. But I, I feel like she's over the top, too. I just think she's, like, over the top sad. It's like, oh, oh, I, my legs, my life is ruined. I would want it to There's be more so over much the top than like, that. <laughs> it's so uh, like, oh, it's so sad, but I'm gonna overcome the odds, and and in the end, I'm gonna help steal. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's how you feel, fair enough. I got nothing from her, like not no entertainment value at I, all. Listen, I'm unimpressed with the character. I, <laughs> I mean, like she she does help steal, but like if she were gone and it were just like him and Richard Roundtree. I I don't think the movie would be, like, that different. In fact, it might help the pacing a little bit. <laughs> oh, fuck. I know who the fucking villain is now. Judd Nelson. I, I knew I recognized him. I couldn't tell where from. He's the fucking guy in Breakfast Club. Yeah. Weirdly, I... <laughs> I, I feel strongly that we have seen him play the villain in something else on Hollow Victories, and he hasn't. He's just, like, one of those guys who would play the villain in a Hollow Victories movie. Right. I mean, yeah, looking at his list, there's definitely stuff on here that could be covered um, in the future. It's, uh, I think that he was, I thought he was entertaining, too, just like Shaquille O'Neal. I thought that there were parts where he was, like, really over the top and I got a laugh out of him. I, I thought his character was just kind of funny, too, because the character's motivation was, like, God, there was just, like, no build-up to it. He just wanted to do shitty things. It's another dinosaur, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to... That's my... That's my. I don't know if that's a metaphor or, or a comparison people will get. It's the uh, guy who doesn't want to cure cancer. He wants to turn people into dinosaurs. And that's my go-to when I just talk about a villain who they decided they don't need to explain a motivation for. They're just evil. <laughs> that's it. I don't know. I mean, I, clearly he's he's in it for. Uh, he's on like a power trip. He's like, oh, I want to control the new weapon that everyone wants. Right, I mean, and it's not fair, here. So is Dinosaur Man. Yeah, that's all it is, though. You know, it's like the bare minimum. Like it's money or power is like the is the bare minimum. I'd say. That be fair. That doesn't mean it's always a bad thing. Sometimes it's fun, but and like I think this character man. is kind of funny. Yeah, Dinosaur Man. I love fucking Dinosaur Man. <laughs> 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 but um you need uh I, I like i said it's like it, it, there's ways to do it right if it's like a comedy for starters you can have like a really like a villain with a very simple motive but they have like a fun execution or you can have a very awkward and over the top villain like this one and yeah i uh i think he i think he pulls it off <laughs> i think he's entertaining in this yeah no i i, I think he's like a decent i, I don't think he's like that interesting or that complex, but no. like he's kind of fun for steel. Yeah, he's definitely not one of the better villains we've talked about. You know, he's no Nicholas. <laughs> he um, he always looks like uh, I don't know exactly how to describe, but like the way he was playing this character, always looked like you kind of offended him before the day. <laughs> and he can't say anything because he has to act. But there's multiple times, especially at the beginning. I know what you where, mean. Where he, he just has a, a face that's just... I don't know why the director let that go. <laughs> <laughs> the director caused it. The director just said, I want you, before we hit record, I want to let you know that I think you're a fucking piece of shit. Action. <laughs> you just did that before every <laughs> shot. Every single take. Uh, Richard Roundtree plays Uncle Joe. 
famous, of course, for playing Shaft in the movie Shaft. So, of course, he, he <laughs> has to make a joke about it in this movie. I, I don't know how you guys are going to feel about this. He was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I believed him, but my, my main reason he was my favorite is I just, I believed him. Like, I, it's it's corny, don't get me wrong, but every time he said something, I was like, I, I buy that this guy actually feels this way. Like, there was one scene where he's... Yeah. A man was, could be shaft. <laughs> <laughs> there was one scene where he's talking to the girl in a wheelchair, like, saying, she's asking, why are, why are you pushing him so hard? And, and he, like, says, because, uh, because he needs that. I like what he's doing. And I was like, I, I believe, I believe him in his delivery. I believe that he, this car- this guy actually feels that way. I, I, my biggest complaint with this character is I think the movie needed more of him. Well, yeah. It could have introduced him a little better, I feel. He just kind of jump, jumps in. <laughs> I mean, he could have been Steel. Yeah, why not? <laughs> no, he was my favorite, though. He was he was a highlight of this. Um, Kind of had a good energy to him the entire time, I feel. Do we want to talk about Ray J as Martin? Famed hip-hop artist Ray J. Was he a child actor in this? I mean, he was like fourteen or fifteen, I think. Okay, um, he was fine. He was sure in the movie. He was he was like kind of the corny kid that the adult is friends with, and there's a lot of movies where that's the case. It gives them something to be used as a hostage near the end of the movie. They do that, but he was fine. He wasn't annoying. Yeah, and like like oh, you know, Shaq's trying to keep him off the street, and he's like, "Don't worry, I've got a legitimate job." But of course, he's working for the bad guy. He lied and said he was a gamer. <laughs> he also used uh, a terminology wrong. So he he said cream like he's getting the cream, you know, which is cash rules everything around me or whatever. And uh, oh yeah, you, you don't you don't get that. <laughs> you you missed the point. <laughs> that was funny that was like you you went on that we got that tangent during the movie and i i'm i am i'm all for it i'm all for the tangent but i was it's like oh yeah where chris chris heard that and immediate was like what yeah <laughs> i don't even know how to explain how wrong it is but it's wrong in like an unnatural like it's wrong in one of those ways of like you know somebody that knows nothing about anything wrote that line right <laughs> someone else i'm surprised we haven't seen before charles napier uh, appears as uh, Colonel David. Oh yeah, uh, the the <laughs> military officer that Shaq serves under. The same guy Just from Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> the movie. Feels like the same guy. Yeah, it's not the same guy at all. It just, it just they, they give, like, the same kind of... They do. If you would have told me that it was the same guy, my response would have... Before I'd called bullshit, my first response would have been, he aged really well. Uh, but, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, they, it's like the same character, kind of. Um, maybe this guy's a little less antagonistic than the one in Sonic, but... He's less antagonistic, but he's the same kind of... Just gives, like, everybody a slap on the wrist instead of, like, do, actually doing something. Right. Even though he has, like, power to do something. Right, right. Um, like, he, he is informed about this, like, like, weapons deal going down, and he still holds off long enough to just let Steel deal with the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, you're not in much of the movie, honestly, though. Pretty small part. No. Very corny performance. I got I got a laugh out of him, too. We have Irma P. Hall as the grandma. Grandma Odessa. Odessa, I don't know. She was she was fine. That another very like sitcom like character, but she was uh she <laughs> she has her she has a, she has her own story arc in the movie. She has the B plot of the movie. Where she's trying to make what what was it again? A souffle, I believe. Uh, yeah, a souffle. Uh and she finally makes it at the end successfully. I, well, I'm see, telling that's you, that's a sitcom been... kind of plot though, right? Like that's what makes it feel sitcom y. Yeah. I have not been this invested in a B plot since Bowser ordering a pizza in the Mario Brothers movie. It was something to behold for sure. <laughs> well, like the way that they performed it, right? Where like they have to whisper whenever they're trying it, like that feels like Something that, like, every week the, she'd be cooking something new, you know, mm-hmm. in the show Steel, the sitcom, so. Yeah. She'd probably be really good in a sitcom. How, how great would, like, a, a multi-episode sitcom where Shaq just plays a, a random-ass superhero with a super suit fighting crime in L.A. be? That'd be great, especially if I had, like, the same villain every week and he just kept fucking up. <laughs> No, I think that'd be I think that'd be a better show. I think you could make uh, Wheelchair Girl better in a TV show too. 
That, no, I'm I'm kind of like the sitcom genre. As long as you don't attach an actual character to it, like Steel, you made it like we go back to saying it's like an original character. That could be a great sitcom. These guys have that energy. They could all do it. Yeah, just every week his his grandma is trying some new weird recipe. <laughs> that could have like twenty I seasons. Would, I of would watch this film. sitcom. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> this movie would have worked better as a sitcom. Like every time the villain like is winning, like they come home and then it's like lack of stew, you gotta keep stirring it, and then he's like, I gotta stir the villain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the the main villain, Judd Nelson, could have like a little sidekick who's just like a tiny version of himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get him today, sir. Oh jeez, we're gonna get steel today. I think I'm mixing sitcom up with Saturday morning cartoon. You are. You definitely are. <laughs> You're using it with Austin Powers and a Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> I'm mainly thinking about the sandwich guy from Stitch. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> I think his henchman should be the the eye patch guy from the movie. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they had some tension. I also love how the hot dog came back too, right? <laughs> oh, he's like, oh, no, nah, I don't eat pork. And he's like, don't worry, it's it's a turkey hot dog. And then at the end, he's like, it wasn't a turkey hot dog. <laughs> that, that is literally like the equivalent of him being like, not. I. I did like <laughs> something I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, Kevin Gravox, Gravix, I don't know how you say the last name. Um, he was one of the minions, right? One of Judd Nelson's, like one, kind of like his second in command almost. And he, uh, his at the end of the movie when he gets like the grenade thrown back at him, that was like a really funny reaction. A very abrupt scene. That was fun. That's that's why I know him for best, but. <laughs> That scene does have, like, uh, one of this movie's two haha ha Shaq is bad at basketball jokes. Yeah. There's, like, I think three. Because, like, he misses and he hits the dog with the, the towel after he's uh, steal for the first or second time. Mm, yeah. He straight up misses a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> then the grenade scene. I, I, I want to say there's one more, but, like... He's like, I've always been bad at three free throws. And I'm like, in the time you've been standing here, you could like run up, jump and throw it in that hole and then run away. Yeah. Like you do <laughs> not have to just like throw it from here. You can run up and jump and throw it through the hole because you are Shaq and you are very tall and you can jump very high. We know this. <laughs> Anything else to say about this movie? Uh, I got nothing. Funny in parts, kind of dull in the middle. Yep. I will try. So Spawn is complicated as hell because Spawn as a franchise has a lot going on with it, which is why the movie is fucking complicated. I mean, I can try to simplify this one. So the story is about a man named Al Simmons. He is a mercenary working for a group, obviously. And he gets betrayed and killed and sent to hell. And and when he gets sent to hell, he... I don't even know exactly. In the comic, he makes a deal, but it just sounds like they're like, yeah, you're now supposed to be the general of hell. But that's not really what's important in this movie. That organization that betrayed him has a bioweapon and they're trying to release it uh, because that's what will start the apocalypse, says by the clown played by John Leguizamo. I am sorry, I, I could go way more in depth with this, but I don't think you guys give a fuck. Is that fair? Did I, did I hit all the points that matter? Because there's more to it. I mean, the problem is the villain's plan is like all over the place. They're playing 5D fucking chess here. <laughs> right, yeah, no, they want, they want Martin Sheen to to hook up a dead man switch to his yeah. heart so that if he dies all the bombs go off and they want spawn to kill martin sheen so that the bombs will go off because he wants revenge on martin sheen for betraying him even though clown or the violator can do it himself <laughs> <laughs> and avoid all yeah, the well, shit. Like, it's it's unclear why it has to be Spawn that kills him. Yeah, no, I mean, because there's a lot going on, but that's kind of the problem with Spawn, is that, like, if you're going to do an origin story, you kind of got to explain it a little more, because they, they don't even really explain that he's supposed to be the general of hell. They kind of just yada yada it, you know? They say it, but it's like, yeah. He has, like, one line in the movie where he's like, 
I'll, I'll lead the armies of hell for Michelle. And that's like the only reference to it. The rest of the movie, it seems like he really does not want to lead the armies of hell. <laughs> so I don't know why he agreed to that. Yeah. In that scene, and then the entire rest of the movie refuses to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it's weird because it's like, so why does this bioweapon cause the apocalypse? Like, couldn't you just release it? Why does this guy have to die? To, to Like, why does, no, why does the spawn specifically have to kill this man for it to work? And I guess you can say, oh, well, because they left it up to Clown. Why the fuck do you leave it up to Clown? There's a lot of, like... There's a lot. <laughs> and then, like, the one guy that betrayed him is fucking his wife. So, like, they had a kid. And it just There's a lot. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> it's uh, better for a TV show just because of the help with the runtime. I'm more familiar with the TV show because I never read the comic. My friend lent me the comic who I watched the show with. And I just never got around to reading it. Uh, the TV show I really enjoyed. I don't remember if I finished the second season or not, but the first season was solid. I feel like it conveyed information a lot better, a lot more smoothly. And it also just didn't do some of the same stuff the movie did. Like, I, I might be remembering it wrong, or maybe this happened in the second season or something. The one home, the, He becomes part of the homeless community there, and the one homeless guy he's talking to throughout in the show I watched didn't do anything other than he was there to talk to him. You know, he wasn't like, am I, am I remembering this wrong, Chris? He, I don't remember him being like physically involved in any of this. So here's the deal. The movie takes a lot of liberties because Spawn, like, well, one, at the time Spawn was doing wild shit in the comics. Like one of the first arcs had like a cyborg, like huge cyborg dude, you know, like this movie wasn't going to do that. You know, and so it, it has a lot of stuff that just this movie wouldn't or couldn't have done. So they kind of took their own liberties with this one. The The show is closer and you are correct. It did not, you know, it wasn't as involved. You know what I mean? And it gets and the thing that's annoying about this movie is it gets certain things right. And also it has references that like only if you read the comic, like the two police officers at the ending are very important characters in Spawn, which uh, weird that they weren't in the rest of the movie. Um, yeah, but I, I, it, it very much feels like this one got filtered through the studio, you know? Yeah. Like, it's one of those movies that, like, I don't know, it's, it's one of those movies that they shouldn't have made because you can't win with how movie studios are, I guess. <laughs> A big movie studios, is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like, it feels like something studios are going to try to simplify but in doing so just complicate the whole thing they want it to be more condensed more straightforward but then it's like okay but this doesn't make any sense the comic made sense yeah it did and that's weird because the comic's a little uh all over the place too so hell even the miniseries made sense right so maybe and I mean, not that I think you couldn't do a movie out of Spawn, but maybe this is not the story you do with a Spawn movie. No. <laughs> we we do feel overdue for a Spawn reboot. You said there was one. Yeah, it's uh, Blumhouse. Blumhouse is doing a, a Spawn movie. It's gonna work. I would love to see a new Spawn movie, but that's a whole different topic for a whole different video. <laughs> we talked about how like there's reasons a lot of studios wouldn't want to touch that. Nowadays, but I will say Blumhouse is a studio that is like probably right for that. They, uh, they, I mean, they let they 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 give a lot of creative freedom, and they um, their mind, the, the like the I think the one negative of doing a Blumhouse movie is often you're not going to get a big budget for it. But I think that's a good trade off for avoiding a shitload of studio interference. I think to loop this back to that movie. The thing about Spawn is that whatever they do, they're going to have to do something original or focus on the more later years of Spawn mm -hmm. because Spawn deals with topics that are just not okay today. Even the movie has touched upon that with Clown, right? Clown was not okay mm -hmm. today. So uh, it, it, whatever... I mean, I also think the Clown is just like annoying and gross and yeah. that would have been true even in the 90s. He is gr he is annoying. He is gross. He's definitely a shock value character, and I don't know. Like I, I don't I don't know. I mean, they might they might be willing to go far with him since he since you're supposed to dislike him. That might be their justification for it. 
He's he's like Beetlejuice's unfunny brother. <laughs> the um, I thought he was like fine in this movie, and that's not because I think he's like a fun or endearing character. It's because he matched what I saw in the TV show pretty closely. Um, the TV show version was a little better than this, though. I'd say mainly because it's two D animation and the expressions are like better than what the this creepy hybrid has. So in 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 the show, does he like does does he say uh, every time someone farts, a demon gets his wings and then fart twice and then go ooh twins? I don't, I don't remember a lot of fart humor with him. I just remember him saying every horrible thing he could possibly imagine. But I don't remember there being a lot of fart humor, honestly. But again, it's been like three years. I might be misremembering something. I don't know if you want me to talk about the issues that I'm talking about, but, like, Spawn does deal with some very, um, real issues that superhero talk uh, that superhero comics don't want to talk about. So, that's the biggest reason why I feel like they're... That, that's the biggest reason why I think this movie is the way it is, is that they focused on early Spawn, and early Spawn is very risky for today with topics that they mainly focus on, if you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I never gave my broad thoughts on this because I was mainly just letting you two go at it. Because I, I don't have a ton to say about this one. Uh, what I'll say about it is I don't think... It, it's, it avoids the bottom of my rankings for this show as a whole. Because it's like, there's some good shots. There's some good sets. There's not like... I, you know, there, it, this movie isn't void of anything good. But I really didn't like it. I mean, I didn't get into any of the characters. I didn't have... I wasn't really laughing at that much aside from the horrible CGI, but I, I don't know. The horrible CGI was one of the more interesting things about it, but it's a huge negative thing about it. I thought it was funny every time it showed up, especially with what you kept quoting every time it happened, which is the special effects movie event of the year, according to the DVD cover. And I love that it does just say special effects, not mind blowing or good special effect. It just says special <laughs> effects. Of it. Cause you know what? Probably. <laughs> probably you use more special effects than anyone else that year. And you want to know why? Because a lot of movies in the 90s understood that there was still a limitation to it. And you just, just decided that, I don't want those limitations. I just want to do it. Make an animated movie for crying out loud. Oh my God. Yeah. No, the CG in this movie is awful. It is one of the worst I've ever seen. Ambitious? Cle yeah. Clear, clearly way past the point that they could actually pull off. Yeah. Clearly on. they wanted to do something they did not have the ability to pull off. You so know, hold I, on. I, I recognize the ambition, but Hear me my out. god, it is awful. Hear me out, you're right, except for the fact that the Violator is better than Malaboja. That's true. It's like significantly better too, which is crazy. <laughs> it's still not good, but it's like, no, but when it's... you look at that, it's kind of like, okay, for the 90s, this makes sense. The Violator CG monster, it's like, for the for 1997, I accept this. The other one? Oh my god, it looks like a high school project. It really it looks like the Money for Nothing music video. And I know that's sounding dramatic, but like, it sounds, it feels like that era of CG. <laughs> it was awful. I, he, he looks like a boss from a PS2 game, except a PS2 game would be able to sync the mouth with him talking. I would the argue mouth PS1. barely went. The mouth didn't even really go up and down in the movie most of the time. Well, and like, that's 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 just him. And then he's surrounded by by all these horrible writhing spawn models. They are like like they look like they did the same thing for Mortal Kombat with them, like the original like arcade Mortal Kombat's. You know what I'm talking about? You know what the... F yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of actually thought that... And I think that's a better comparison because it's, like, aesthetically more fit. And I compared them to the fucking background humans in Food Fight. Because the Food Fight CG is really bad. <laughs> but it's also, like, the humans were, like, downgraded even more. Because they were just there to fill in a the background. They weren't there to, like, actually... You're not even really supposed to see their faces in the movie. Except for one. Yeah. <laughs> a couple, unfortunately. Well, more than one. Unfortunately, it's actually better off if they're like Mortal Kombat background characters. But uh, yeah, no, it's like, here's the thing. I actually think that art style can be endearing because I've seen a lot of people, once the technology got better, there are several shows and web shows and 
like even music videos that went back to that. But one, it feels like it's paying homage to those old days, like for starters. And two, a lot of the time it's used for like something with a proper tone. Like Xavier Renegade Angel, for example, has like really, really like shit animation, like shit CG animation. But it's one that like belongs in that show. You couldn't make that show look any other way. Like that's that is the aesthetic for that show. It works really well. Uh, and it came out years after this, so they were, like, probably capable of making something with, like, better textures and that, but they just didn't want to. I think that art style can be really endearing, and it can work really well, but it's being used in this movie where it is 100% unironic. I will give it to the suit. The, the suit was okay. looks fine. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that, uh... I think that they could have made it look better with, like, some methods that other pe people in the industry were doing, but we're talking about, like, Spielberg, you know, we're not talking about, I don't, I don't, like, know how much fun in this movie had. Like, you could make some of, like, to, a, a real good way to make CG work back then was to make it a mix of live action and CG, like, you did some of the work practically, and then you put CG over it. Uh, Jurassic Park is, like, the most well-known example of that. Obviously, doing dinosaurs is gonna be a little easier than doing it for, like, a bunch of hell <laughs> demons or something. But I don't know. There's, like, a lot of puppetry work that's been done. There's there's a way to make this look better than that. Where, for them, it was just, like, no, every part of the process was done in CG. And, yeah, you see the effects of doing that in the year 1997. But even then, I'm going to say there was probably other people in 1997 that could have done better. The hell in this movie is on par with the hell in the film The Miracle Man. <laughs> I don't know The Miracle Man. With, I, I reviewed it. There's like a terrible CG rat that I specifically focused on. The practical, like, makeup is okay. Didn't, like, blow me away, but it was it was good. It sure was Deadpool. Yeah, they, I, I got some real Deadpool vibes from this. Yeah. I mean, um, it makes sense. You know, like, different reasons, but they both have bad skin. I feel like if you combined the Violator and Spawn in this movie, it would be Deadpool. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys want to talk about who's in this film? Sure. Yeah. Michael J. White. Jai. Jai. Michael Jai White. Famous for playing Black Dynamite. Hell yeah. Um, he's alright in this. I mean, he, he gives a pretty decent performance, I'd say. It's, um... It, it, I, I don't think any, like problems with the character comes from him yeah no i i don't know i'm pretty indifferent to spawn as a character in this not that i think he's like a bad character but he also like never really captures me i'm, I'm not like invested in his story at all yeah i think the tv show does better with that too although some of that comes from like the animation conveys information a bit better like spawns eyes in the tv show kind of function the same like spider-man's war yeah, i was about to like, say spawn is just edgy spider-man because yeah. he monologues to himself and that probably i know people hate that in movies but like give us how he feels a little bit in but the movie. chris venom is already edgy spider-man yeah kind of <laughs> TV show genuinely did a way better job showing how fucking torn up he was about his family moving on yeah like he does, it does, it does a way fucking better job with that. Um, I should, I mean, really, just his wife. I know the kid isn't actually his, but he's. But that's the thing, though, is that he at least treats the kid like it's his. Yeah, and in the show, the show has a character that the movie like completely cut. Um, he was like one of the main problems of the first season. Um, which is the pedophile ice cream man. He wasn't in this, right? Yeah, no. See, that's what I was talking about, why I don't think Spawn could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of those things, though. I, I, get, I get that some of that makes people uncomfortable, but, I mean, I don't know. He's a, he is a villain. He's stopped. He's stopped in a pretty horrific he way, stopped, too. He's stopped, all right. <laughs> okay, but, okay, what what if we added that character to this movie and he was played by Clint Howard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Clint Howard. <laughs> Well, he played the ice cream man in the ice cream man. He was a murderer in that, not a pedophile, but uh, yeah. you know, similar. I mean, I think Same I think vibe. I think it's a pedophile murderer the in Spawn, but yeah, and he's like he's like the kid child of like a politician. The politician character, I believe, is in this, or is it like supposed to be a different character? 
I'm asking Chris because I'm going off of a fuzzy memory here. I don't know. Uh, I do not say. I don't know. I presumably, presumably, they fill the same role. Whether or not they are the same character, they fill the same role. The, oh, the ice, the ice cream, ice cream, the ice the cream I- guy. The ice cream guy um, has someone who's looking out for him. That's all I know. Like he is avoided getting into trouble until Spawn intervenes. Yes, you are correct. I don't remember if it was the main villain or a political figure or both. Um, I think it was both. I haven't seen the show. I haven't in a seen while. the short in so long, or yeah. the miniseries. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. He's one of those characters that comics don't normally like to do, where when he's dead, he stayed dead. <laughs> John Le- Leguizamo. How do you? F- I-, I know how to. I- John Leguizamo. I-, I know how to say his name. I'm just like my mouth isn't letting me say it. I'm fucking stupid. Um, he would, this would have, uh, there's a delete, there's a lost episode of Hall of Victories that I, I won't reveal what it is, um, because I don't know what Matt wants to do with that yet, uh, but there is a lost episode of Hall of Victories where this would have been a second appearance, that's, that's your hint, um, but no. There, the, that's possible for a few movies. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's been in shit. He's been in good stuff too, but he's been in shit. Um, <laughs> I think I think he fits the character. I know the Violator is. Yeah, I agree. He's an annoying character. I think he's better on the TV show. I think that's the point, though. Yeah, that 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 is the point. Like he's like he's horrible. Like the Violator is literally an antagonist to push Spawn to doing bad things or to annoy him enough where he'll you know. I think on the I think on the TV show. They probably do a better job of the Violator being annoying to Spawn than Spawn and the audience. You know, there is kind of a balance there um, where an annoying character, I think, I think at the end of the day, an annoying character is only supposed to annoy other characters and not the audience. Because I don't think annoyance is a emotion that any audience member wants to feel, right? No, but I mean, there's a lot of, but that's the thing that's great about cinema, right? Is that it can make you feel things you don't want to feel. That's true. That's true. Um, no, I'm not defending this role. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that he, I think he did a fine job. I think he followed the assignment. I think the thing with him is that they tried to take stuff from the comic and the miniseries. Like they pulled a, uh, they pulled a civil war where like, you know, Captain America holds up the shield and Iron Man does the thing. They pulled one of those where spawn versus the violator kind of thing in the movie that just didn't need to happen. You know what I'm talking about? Where like, yeah, beat spawn. Yeah. And unfortunately for me personally, I've got nothing else to say about this cast. You guys go ahead. I, they, they but left see, that's like the problem, so little same. of fucking mark on me. There are several characters that I, I kept mixing up for one another in this until, until like, okay, no, this is their role in the movie. Okay. It's this guy. Like these were, these were not interesting people. Well, there's like the chick who shows up and, and fights Spawn when he like breaks into the president gala and she's clearly supposed to be like this cool, badass character and he just kills her. Yeah. And it's like, who was that even? <laughs> she had a gun up her skirt. Or down her skirt. Melinda Clark. Just some it was a skirt. some random some random like leather clad badass woman that Spawn immediately kills. Yeah, no, they did nothing with her. Boring character. We do have someone we need to acknowledge who maybe arguably deserves the title of of Hollow Victory's King. Even though a lot of his roles have been uncredited, Mr. Frank Welker, one of the most prolific voice actors of all time, voices Satan in this movie, <laughs> um, so, has also appeared in The Grinch, Space Jam, uh, The Cat in the Hat, Looney Tunes Back in Action, Tank Girl, and My Little Pony. So I don't want to be that person, but uh, technically the villain isn't Satan. <laughs> there, there is yes, a Satan okay. in Spawn. The, the, the devil. The devil. Ah, uh, okay. Mal, Mal, Mal Baloney. Malabogia, yeah. Um, he's, the, he's one of the demons of hell, very close to Satan, but is not Satan. How? Which, they should have explained that in the movie. But they I didn't. don't think it matters. I don't think it matters in the context of the movie, frankly. No, I think doesn't. you can just say he's Satan. It and doesn't. Like, that but changes like, nothing about the film. But see, that's the thing, right? Is that it's a comic film, and that's where, like, you would be like, yeah, shouldn't they t- talk about that a little bit? Like, because he does have kind of a plot. 
th there's a reason why he's not the devil. Like, he, he, you know what I mean? Like, he's kind of doing underhanded shit, which this movie wouldn't have helped if they continued. But, um, y you're right. It's just, they, they should have made it clear that he's not the devil. <laughs> I think that, um, Frank Welker as the king, I don't know, how many more movies than Ron Howard is he in at this point? Uh, two. Two? No, three. Three, mm, maybe. The definite. I don't even if he is uncredited in a few of those. I would say so, at a point it goes a little bit off of screen time, but at that point, um, Rob Schneider probably has Ron Howard beat. So it's kind of like, yeah, Frank Welkner might need to be the new king. Yeah, I'm sad to see Ron Howard go, but so is this like a running thing? Like there can be a new king. Will there yeah. be a new king? Okay, Frank Ron Howard has had it for a while, and there's been some people gaining up on him. Like Sarah Silverman's had a one or two, you know Adam Sandler, Sandler and Ron's and Sandler, S Sandler and Schneider are the two that are like the closest behind him. So here's what you Although, guys need to do: you need to find their address, send them a crown when when Hollow Victories is over, and uh, hopefully they're still alive by the time that happens. Actually, <laughs> uh, maybe Frank Welkner. I mean. It's possible. I I I think there are certainly things that could promote you to king more than just being in the most episodes. Well, I think, and I think that's, I think that's true. I, I think it gets a, uh, I think it gets a little complicated at a point though, because Ron Howard did have like a, a decent chunk role in most of the stuff that we're covering for. Never like main character, but always like a decent chunk of the movie. Well, it, it was kind of a cameo in Cat in the Hat. Mm -hmm. That's, That's why I said most of them. It's like, okay, this is, this, this is a smaller role for him. Yeah. And Frank Welker. Well, Frank Welker really has not really played much of a, an important role in any of these. Mm -hmm. Now we'll decide later. Is there anything else you guys want to say about the casting? <laughs> uh, no. Nah. I, I do, I, I have one nice thing that I want to say about this movie. It is really well paced. Like, the, this is like, the, for the cut we watched was an hour 40. And, I don't know, it's a pretty breezy hour 40. Like, we, we were getting to the end and I'm like, oh wow, we're wrapping this up already. Like, this, this movie just kind of flew by. It's very well paced. I, yeah, I have to agree. I think um another thing I like is the the homeless set design. Yeah, yeah. I think that there was some like tower, and I think that the a lot of the towers I'm thinking of were at the top of the homeless uh, area. So yeah, I, I thought that was like nice. There were some good shots there. Is that is that all we got for positives? Um, I like how Spawn was Spawn. <laughs> I don't. I think he should have been Steel. <laughs> no, he should have been Shadow the Hedgehog. His motivation may have been equally confused in the shadows. If I had seen this movie before, I might actually have paired it up with, like, the Nick Cage Ghost Rider. The first one. Yeah. Because um, the two do have a lot in common. Probably more in common than these two have. Although, this and Steel have a lot of really specific things in common. Mm-hmm. I, I talk a lot about how there's, like, almost two sides to the 90s. There's, like, the dark, edgy 90s, and then there's, like, the cool, radical, in-your-face 90s. And this is, like, almost the same concept being played on the two sides of the 90s. Like, Spawn is, like, the edgy 90s, and Steel is, like, the cool, poochy 90s. <laughs> I mean, you are, you are correct. What? I've never heard anybody use that word in that context. I've only heard people use it to, like, refer to a dog. Like, oh, look at my Poochie. Look at my little Poochie. And well, I was, I was referring to the character Poochie from The Simpsons. Yeah. I don't know anything about The Simpsons. <laughs> other than that they're a mean yellow family. How fucking dare you? <laughs> Michael says, how fucking dare you? I have to go now. <laughs> and my planet needs me. 
Is that all we is have we made it to this part of the evening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Chris, would you like to vote first or first or last? Fuck. Um I'll vote last. Alright. Uh here's the thing. I I totally get the argument for Spawn. I think like Steel is one of those bad movies that's funny at the beginning, funny at the end, really boring in the middle. Where Spawn holds itself to a pretty consistent level of quality for for like most of it. And like I said, much better paced. I was never bored watching Spawn. So I do almost see the argument for Spawn. But here's the thing. The funny moments of Steel, way more entertaining than anything in Spawn. And also, nothing in Steel I think was as bad as, for example... John Leguizamo farting loudly and going, ooh, a wet one, better check that out, and then, like, <laughs> ripping off his underwear and going, like, ooh, skid marks. You want to see stain? Or, <laughs> or <laughs> I, I don't think anything in Steel is as bad as the hell CG. So I would say Steel has... The best parts of Steel are better than anything in Spawn, and the worst parts of Spawn are better are, are worse than anything in Steel. So, yeah, I'm voting Steel on this one. Uh, I'm with you. I, uh, like, Steel, Steel's kind of, like, re- like middle of the road for me. I didn't really like it that much, but it's not, like, I, I, I kind of, boredom is what I got mostly from it. I, I fucking hated, I fucking hated Spawn. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I act, it's, it's one of the ones that I can say that I, no, I, I just, I don't like this. Uh, it's not that, it's not to say that there was nothing good about it. We named a few good things about it, but, um. No, I had a bad time watching that. Steel, I had fun for some of it, at least, and it's not like... I, I think that at its best, Spawn looks nicer than Steel. But at its worst, oh my god, Steel's a better movie. What say you, Chris? So Spawn is more accurate to the comic, which doesn't mean shit, right? Like, it hits a lot of the points. There's a lot of stuff that if you read the comic, you'll get. But if you didn't, fuck you, right? And that's why Steel's better, because Steel said, fuck the comic. I want to make a movie that I want to fucking make. And at least that, like, because you can't, if you go to Steel and you're mad that Superman's not in it, you kind of you kind of are going to be mad regardless, right? Spawn should be better, right? And yeah, am I, mean, I making sense? <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost like when we did a... Last Airbender versus uh, uh, Dragon Ball Evolution. Dragon Ball Evolution missed the point entirely, but they did just kind of do their own thing, and it was kind of funny, where Last Airbender was just a boring version of something that was already good. Because, like, I know that I didn't have a lot to say about, like, Steel, but, like, whatever I had to say is, like, oh, well, it's not like the comic. No, but that doesn't matter, right? Like... It's, it's, it's funny, and it, I don't know, uh, I just, I, I don't know, I, I feel like, uh, it's just not a better movie, but I, it, it, I had more fun with it, even though I don't remember it that much. All right. You guys want to know something insane? What's the Spawn one? This, the, the audience is insanely against us on this one. Mm. It is 91% for Spawn. Out of 74 it. votes. I can see it. <laughs> I mean, like I said, like I see the argument for Spawn. I think that makes this a good matchup, is like, I can see the argument for either side. Even though to me, yeah, it's Steel. No question, it's Steel. Because like, part of me wants to say Spawn, but like, I don't know. See, I think the thing is that we will always get another Spawn movie. I do not think we'll ever get another Steel movie, and even if we do, it won't have Shaq, so it won't be as good. <laughs> hey, so can I can I say this on on this part here? Can I can I say one thing? They didn't even bring him back for the Flash movie. God they brought damn everyone it, back for the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that, man. I swear to God, <laughs> you green egg didn't have it in me here. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, uh, fuck the audience, Steel wins. <laughs> I think Olivia's gonna kill me. <laughs> That's fine. 
God, we didn't even <laughs> talk fine. about the woman. We didn't even talk about the woman in Steel. Like he already has the woman who like broke her legs is in a, and is in a wheelchair now. But then there's like another woman he has to save at the beginning, and she also like has to get carted off by an ambulance. Yeah, no, the woman need to stay away from Shaquille. <laughs> yeah, there's like a police officer he's riding around with, and she she gets hospitalized too, and it's like by the same well, weapon. fuck. <laughs> All right, next time on on Hollow Victories, this one was Chris's idea, and my Michael and I were talking about like Michael's ideas for the podcast, and I'm like, I'm not sure we have done one of Michael's ideas. <laughs> maybe we have, maybe we have, but I think mostly Michael has been like, "Hey, what's something we could pair up with this?" And I'm like, "Ooh, that would go well with this other movie, actually." I think that like. So ever since I just to give I'm sorry to talk over this part, but I did I just want to give one thought on that. We when we first started the show, we did suggest a bunch of ideas. So it's very possible one of my ideas got have gotten used. I don't think one has gotten used post the show starting. You know, but it's your show. I'm not like I, I, I <laughs> I'm not that I'm not like upset about that. But yeah. It's, well, uh, next time we're gonna do one that I know was your idea. <laughs> I think it's, I know what it uh, is. <laughs> it's um, much later movies based on old cat cartoons. Um, it's that that kind of don't really follow the original cartoon at all. It's Felix the Cat the movie versus Tom and Jerry the movie. I, is this was this my idea? I don't remember. I'm confident this okay. was your idea. I was about to say I paired that up with uh, f- Sausage Party, but no, that's that's uh, that's Fritz the Cat. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you I thought you were gonna originally say like Tom and Jerry and Fritz the Cat or something. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm looking forward to that pair up. I, I thought because that was gonna line up with the April matchup, you were gonna finally give me Shrek Three versus Godfather Three. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, a beautiful not pair yet. up. Not <laughs> quite yet. <laughs> Another year, cross fingers crossed. <laughs> All, right. All right, awesome. Uh, <laughs> Chris, thanks for being here with us. I Hell love yeah. that. <laughs> Tom and Jerry the movie is another one of those meme movies for me, even though it's not one like Eight Crazy Nights where I quote it all the time. I think the Tom and Jerry movie is hilarious. Not not a single one of them is intentional. I, I think it's a, one of the biggest derailments I've ever seen in a movie ever. But I, Felix the Cat, the movie, I've never actually watched. I only saw the Nostalgia Critic on it, so I'm looking forward to actually watching that. <laughs> really? All right. This this could go some interesting places. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you I guys next time. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't have to be in oh, that I'm not one. there. No, I'm just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Felix the Cat has the same opening as Mario 64. I know that. Anyways, until next time... For my co-host, Mackle Shadackle, I am Matt Presents. We will see you in the next one. Peace.